Hi, my name is John. I am a 19 year old custom woodworker from Napanee, Ontario. I do a large variety of custom woodworking from dining tables, custom furniture, cutting boards. Last year, January, I added a sawmill to my shop, which is great. So now I'm able to produce my own lumber to use for my custom projects. I actually started my business when I was 13. It started with pens. I got a mini lathe for my birthday in grade eight. That's what my parents got me. And I started making stuff on the lathe and I was actually able to sell that at a local market near me. That's kind of where it all started. And I've just slowly worked my way up from there. Started with rolling pins, pens, smaller cutting boards, little banana holders, stuff like that. And I've just kind of, built my business up. People are usually surprised by the fact that I actually just graduated high school a year and a half ago and I actually didn't take any woodworking in high school. I'm actually pretty well self-taught. Yeah, I'm trying to kind of take it to another level, do a lot of social media. I quickly found off posting on TikTok and Instagram that people are really interested in the stuff that I'm doing. I never expected to get a sawmill even, which I mean, it's pretty crazy to me that I have one now and I'm able to mill lumber for people. I'm able to mill lumber for myself. Five years ago, a sawmill never would have been in my mind, probably never even thought of it until, yeah, earlier last year when I thought of getting a sawmill, I thought it would be a good investment and so far it has been. I have kind of actually like a list here of like the main parts of doing a resin pour, if you would want me to go over that. Step one, I guess you could say, would be selecting the wood. Usually I have a client ready for when I'm doing a resin pour, but I do have a handful of boards I make a year that will just be for fun. So I do have quite a lot of live edge lumber that I've accumulated over the years. That way I have lots of different options for my clients. My most popular woods are usually black walnut and maple. So that's what I have the most of. I typically look for something unique that has like lots of character, natural voids, unique grain patterns, that sort of thing. And then after I've selected wood, I cut it to its rough length. I have these no seal forms. They're 10 by 18 inch and they are actually basically one piece forms. So you don't have to worry about any resin leaking. They have five degree walls on them so that you're able to put your wood in there after your resin has cured, you're able to, to pop it out nice and easily. So yeah, I cut my wood to its rough length. Then I flatten it with my jointer and then planer. That way I have two nice, perfectly flat and parallel sides depending on kind of what style I'm going with. There's lots of different styles. You can do kind of like an encapsulated board where you just have one live edge piece with epoxy on the sides or a live edge piece with just epoxy on one side or obviously the most popular one where you have the river running down the middle. An important part about that is making sure that the live edge is nice and clean. You wanna remove any bark, any debris that's on there. That way your resin has a really good surface to bond to. Once I've done that, I can obviously place my pieces in my 10 by 18 resin form and clamp those down because the epoxy will make the wood float. Once I've got everything kind of prepped in there, it's time to measure the epoxy, which is quite simple. It's just the length times the depth times the average width and then divide that by 61. That gives you the volume of resin you need in liters. Once you figure out how much resin you need, obviously it's time to mix the resin. I use, I've used a ton of different brands of epoxy, literally probably over a dozen by now. The one I've currently been using is a three to one ratio by weight. So I mix that up depending on how much epoxy I need. Mix it for about five minutes, depending on if I, if it's my board or if it's for a client, pick a color, lots of different colors. There's hundreds of different mica powders or solid colors you can do in these resin pours. Mix the dye in and then obviously do the resin pour. Lots of people have seen the resin pours. That's one thing I feature quite a lot on my social medias is me pouring resin. Once I do the pour, it takes about four days for the resin to completely cure. Once it's cured, pop it out of the form and I'm just able to use a rubber mallet on the sides to 
pop it out. Once it's out of the form, the form's ready for the next board if I wanted to. Once it's cured, I replane it, plane both sides again, get any excess epoxy off the top and the bottom. After that, I cut all four sides to their final widths because like I said, the five degree angle on the resin form, want to get rid of that and any extra epoxy that might be on the edges. Then we're basically got a nice board ready to be sanded. Sanding is one of the most important parts to me. And I think it sets me apart from other woodworkers because I just make sure it's perfect every single time. I spend probably 90% of the time spent on these boards sanding, making sure they're perfect, starting with 80 grit, work all my way up to 400 grit, make sure it's nice and smooth. Then it's basically ready for finish. I've used lots of different finishes, wax-based finishes, oil-based finishes. I've kind of settled on just pure mineral oil, soaking the board in that for about a day or so, letting the wood really get saturated there. And then I apply a wax and mineral oil finish. That kind of gives it a nice even sheen. You kind of buff that in and then wipe off all the excess. There you have it. You pretty much have a completely finished board. Usually I, I provide the lumber. I've accumulated quite a bit of lumber over the past years. So my thought behind getting my sawmill was I would be able to make a building or a detached building to basically store my lumber in. And since I've got my sawmill, I've actually, we just recently finished it. We built a lean-to roof over the back of my shop. I have had a few clients um, bring me lumber to use for their project. Something that kind of stands out is I had a lady that brought me an old crate, an old shipping crate that um, her dad received a microscope in. And I made her seven charcuterie boards out of it for her seven children. That's kind of the cool thing about when I do have clients bring their own lumber. Usually it has some sort of sentimental value to them, which is very nice. And I like being able to make something out of stuff like that. The most popular things these days are stuff that have voids, stuff stuff that people usually would consider firewood. That's that's everyone's favorite nowadays. Stuff that's rotten, fallen apart, spalted, that sort of thing. So I usually give them a handful of options to kind of pick from. Take some photos of live edge slabs that I have. I, I usually send them photos of boards that have knots missing, or have lots of curl, very unique live edges that aren't straight, that sort of thing. That's that's usually what I'm looking for, something nice and unique, something that stands out. For my river boards, usually this is quite on the low end compared to a lot of people. I charge my 10 by 18 river boards, I charge $130 for. To kind of break that down, about 15 to $20 of that is, is usually the lumber itself whether that be me having to cut the wood or whether it just be kiln dried lumber that I've gotten from somewhere. Um, and then you're looking at about another 20 to $30 for the resin. Then obviously you have your consumables, your finish, sandpaper, that sort of thing. And obviously my time and labor, that's, that's kind of what I'm able to get for them in terms of my demographic, where I live, what people are willing to spend on something like that. I like to say that I've had a lot of mistakes, but in terms of the epoxy pour, it's just something that you don't want to mess up, that it's hard to mess up. The only, I guess, big mistake I had is I have mixed the improper ratio of epoxy before, which obviously if you do that, your epoxy does not cure correctly. I still have that epoxy pour and basically it's just rubbery. It's just a rubbery mess. I mixed the wrong ratio. It was a two to one and I mixed a one to one. So again, you learn from your mistakes and I've only done that once. Just strive for uniqueness. I, I like the fact that they're very unique epoxy boards. They're, they're one of a kind. I like how you can basically do it however you would like. I've seen so many different variations of epoxy pours. Some people will just use scrap pieces of wood, have a really abstract looking piece of art at the end of it, or obviously your live edge charcuterie boards that have small epoxy fills across them, the river boards, 
tables. There's just such a large variety of things you can do with epoxy. Honestly, I think it's just the fact that each resin pour is unique. You'll never see a specific resin board that is the exact same as another. They're all so unique. There's so many different colors you can do. Obviously, just the satisfaction, people enjoy watching it. It looks like water. It looks like you're pouring a river. And it's just, it's just a very unique process that you don't see in a lot of places except social media these days.